Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 14. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright and in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, family and friends. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church under one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, serving two congregations in the community of Greenville, South Carolina, where people of every age, race, gender, nationality, and status are welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Friends, do you ever feel like you are different and unimportant to those around you? God made each of us different for a reason. Find out why you should stop trying to be like everyone else. You are unique and your gifts and abilities are a gift from God. Hear the word of the Lord today. I believe he is speaking to you. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for another day that you've given unto us. And oh God, we come to you today giving you honor, praising you and worshiping you, thanking you. And God, we ask that your presence would be in the midst of this sermon today, that you would pour out your anointing, oh God, on this word and on the speaker. Lord God, that you would break every bondage, destroy every yoke with the bondage, with, the, with this word, Father God, things that are holding people back and keeping them from being everything you're calling us to be. Lord, I pray, I also pray for those that are grieving the loss of loved ones this morning. Loss due to COVID, loss due to cancer and other disease and sickness. Father God, I pray that you would comfort the hearts of those that grieve today. Let them know, Lord God, that in you, we grieve like people with hope, hope of eternal, of a resurrection and eternal life. Oh, Father God, I Put your loving arms around them and comfort them in this hour. Lord, I pray for those on sick beds today. Heal, strengthen, deliver, oh God. Now, Lord, I pray that you would speak a word through this sermon for those that are listening and really need to hear it. In Jesus' name, God, use me. Use me to your glory. Amen. Amen. I'm coming to you today with a sermon by the title of Who is Packing Your Parachute? Who is Packing Your Parachute? And it's from the scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14 and verse 27. Hear these words from the Lord. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is made up of one part. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many parts. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Say, thanks be to God. Who is packing your parachute? Who is packing your parachute? A parable is told 
about a group of animals deciding to improve their general welfare by starting a school. The curriculum included swimming, running, climbing, and flying. Now, the duck, of course, was an excellent swimmer, but was deficient in other areas. <coughs> Excuse me. So he majored in climbing, running, and flying, causing his swimming ability to weaken. The rabbit, the superior runner, was forced to spend so much of his time in other classrooms that he soon lost much of his speed. <coughs> the squirrel, who has been, who had been rated A as a climber, dropped to a C because his instructor spent hours and hours trying to teach him to swim and fly. And the eagle, who could soar above the treetops, was told to learn how to climb, even though flying was most natural for him. This parable circulated for years in the educational circles as a reminder that people are different. Everyone is not the same. Sometimes we are looking for success in all the wrong places, places we are just not gifted. Paul's message to the Corinthian church on spiritual gifts is a message for the church today. The Corinthian community was divided and broken by those who had put themselves up and put others down in the church. They viewed themselves as having more important gifts and saw others as having less important gifts in the church. Paul was saying, we have different gifts, but all are important. All are needed in the body. Which part of your body you do not need? No matter how small, how insignificant, we need all parts of our body. I found out just how important my big toe was in, when, when I injured it over two months ago. It is small, but it is important to make my body, my foot, my step, my stride function properly. As I said last week, no one is left out. Everybody is somebody. All have an important function beneficial to the body of Christ, to the whole church. Paul said, if the foot should say, I'm not a part of the body, because I'm not a hand, that would not stop it from being a part of the body. If the ear should say, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, that would not stop it from being part of the body. If everyone was an eye, where's the hearing? If everyone was an ear, where's the smelling? But God has put each one of us into the body just as he wants us to be. No one is left out. All are important parts. To the church. Each of us is gifted in special ways. The Holy Spirit gave you your gift and you are to cultivate and develop it to use it in the service of the Lord. So friends, if I'm a duck for whom swimming comes naturally, although I may want to learn to climb, run, and fly, I'm a fool if I neglect swimming. That's my area of giftedness. If I'm a rabbit who comes by running naturally, I may climb, I may take climbing and, and flying and swimming lessons, but I dare not neglect running. As a squirrel who knows how to climb, swimming, swimming, flying and other areas, swimming, flying and running are not areas of my primary expertise. I'm not gifted in them. If I'm an eagle, how pathetic would it be to have my wings clipped by my desire to climb, run, and swim when I am able to soar high in the sky? Somebody needs to type in the chat or tell your neighbor, I am important, an important part of God's body. I'm an important part of God's body. Yes, each one is important to the body, no matter how insignificant you may feel, 
No matter how unimportant others may think you are, you know better than anyone what you do best. There's a true story about Captain Charles Plum, a U.S. Navy jet pilot, fighter pilot. After 75 combat missions in Vietnam, a missile hit and destroyed his plane. Plum ejected and parachuted into enemy hands. He was captured and spent six years in communist prison. He survived and now he lectures about lessons learned from that experience. One day, Captain Plum and his wife were sitting in a restaurant. A man at another table came up to him and said, you're Captain Plum. You flew fighter jets in Vietnam from the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. You were shot down and spent six years in an enemy prison. And Captain Plum looked at him and said, how in the world did you know all that? And the man said, I packed your parachute. Plum was so surprised and filled with gratitude. The man kept shaking his head and said, I guess it worked. And Plum said, it sure did. If your chute hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. Plum couldn't sleep that night thinking about that man. He says, I kept wondering what he might have looked like in a Navy uniform. I wondered how many times I might have passed him on the Kitty Hawk. I wondered how many times I might have seen him and not even said, good morning, how are you, or anything else. You see, I'm a fighter pilot, and he was just a sailor. Plum thought of the many hours the sailor had spent on a long wooden table in the bowels of the ship, carefully weaving the shrouds and folding the silk of each shoot, always holding in his hands the life of someone he didn't know. In his speaking engagements, Plum asked his audience, who is packing your parachute? Friends, everybody is somebody. Everybody has someone who provides what they need to make it through the day. Don't let your pride blindfold you to the people who provide the parachutes in your life and the lives of others. I repeat, everybody is somebody. No one is left out. Charlie Plum's experience reminds us that the faith community needs every person playing their part. You have a part to play, and some of those parts will be the glamorous roles, like the fighter pilot while others will be behind the scene, out of the way, and apparently unimportant jobs like parachute packing. But all functions are vitally important. Every day we talk out of our mouth, we laugh, we sing, and enjoy good food. Who would not think that a mouth is an important part of the body? In fact, some might say it is the most important part. But let that part of the body that breaks down the food, that gets rid of the food, stop functioning. Now the mouth does not seem like the most important part, does it? All parts of the body are needed. The church of Jesus Christ is made up of us, you and me, all playing a part. Each person with a unique gift that is necessary for the church. Don't think you are not that important. Don't think that you are uh, more important than someone else. Everybody is somebody in God's house. Everybody is somebody in God's church, in God's kingdom. It may not look like it. People may not treat you like it. Or you may not feel like you are an important part. But each of us are important to the success of the whole church. Our diversity our differences, our uniqueness, even the weakest part makes us a stronger, healthier church. I need you and you need me. God has put us together in his body. We need each other. Don't ever underestimate your gift to the church. If you can sing, sing. If you can serve, serve. If you can give, give. Lead, 
encouraged. Whatever you do well, do it. You have a gift and God gave it to you. Shine in your gift. Do what you do best and know that your gift, your ability is needed for us to be a successful body of Christ. Know that it is needed for us to be a successful community of faith, a successful church. Who is packing your parachute? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for making me an important part of your body and seeing that others who are different are important as well. Help me not to ignore the gift that you've given to me. And dear God, give me the opportunity to use my gift in your church for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I don't know what your relationship is with God. Maybe you are facing trouble right now. This is a good time to repent. Turn away from a life of sin and seek God. It is by faith that we are saved. It's a gift from God. Receive it today. He is waiting to hear from you. So call on him. Amen? Amen. Let us close with a benediction. Now may the peace of Christ, which pass all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time.